Christine Chubbuck's Suicide Tape Christine Chubbuck was an American television news reporter who worked for WTOG and WXLT-TV in Florida. On July 15, 1974, she committed suicide on live television during her report on Suncoast Digest. Leading up to her suicide, Christine was severely depressed. She had told her family members that she was having a hard time connecting with people and that she had not had a boyfriend for a very long time. Three weeks before her suicide, Christine done a news story on suicide and visited a local sheriff's department to discuss the risks. During the interview, a police officer explained to her the most efficient way to commit suicide. He said the most efficient way was a gunshot to the back of the head. In a week leading up to her suicide, Christine told her co-workers that she had brought a gun into work and she joked about killing herself live on the air. They laughed her off as they just thought she was joking. Christine was disappointed that the news station would focus on putting out blood and gore reports instead of putting out educational and inspirational news. On the morning of her suicide, Christine told her co-workers that she had to read some news stories before starting her Suncoast Digest interview. She reported three stories and then started to discuss a shooting that happened in a restaurant at the Sarasota International Airport. The station attempted to run a clip of the shooting, but a problem occurred and the tape wouldn't play. So this is when Christine said, In keeping with Channel 40's policy of bringing you the latest in blood and guts, and in living colour, you are going to see another first, attempted suicide. She then pulled a gun out and took the sheriff's advice and shot herself in the back of the head, just behind her right ear. She fell forward and hit her head on the desk. She then fell to the ground and began to start twitching violently. The camera quickly went to black and the station ran a public service announcement. Christine had scripted the entire event including her suicide. She told her colleagues to list her condition as critical and they did. She died in hospital 14 hours after the shooting. Christine's family filed an injunction against the news station to prevent the release of the video footage. The tape was seized by police and then given to the family. No copies have surfaced and it is impossible to find on the internet or anywhere else. Although the event occurred before VHS tapes were popular, it is possible that somebody captured the event with a primitive form of video cassette recording, such as the U-Matic. So the footage might be still out there somewhere. Guess you just have to look hard enough. Steve Irwin's death video. Most of you probably know who Steve Irwin is, but for those who don't, Steve Irwin was an Australian wildlife expert and TV personality. He was nicknamed the Crocodile Hunter. His most well-known TV show was called The Crocodile Hunter, which debuted in 1996. On the 4th of September 2006, Steve was killed by a stingray while filming a documentary called Ocean's Deadliest. During the filming, Steve was snorkeling at Bat Reef in Queensland, Australia. But due to a weather disruption, Steve entered shallower waters of the area and began to start filming segments for his daughter's television program. Within the waters were many stingrays. As Steve approached one to get footage of it, the stingray jabbed Steve's chest with its spine. The spine entered Steve's chest and pierced his heart, causing massive amounts of bleeding. The film crew pulled Steve out of the water, but it was too late. He died shortly after his heart was pierced. It is believed to be the only time that cause of death by Stingray has been caught on tape. There have been reports that Steve's last words were, Don't worry, they usually don't swim backwards. This shows that he recognised the Stingrays were acting strange. The video of Steve Irwin's death was reviewed by law enforcement and was eventually destroyed at the request of his family. Many people believe that there are copies of the footage on the web, and millions of people continue to search for it, but most of the time they just come across fake videos. Carla Homoloka Tapes Paul Bonardo, otherwise known as the Scarborough Rapist, terrorised the community of Scarborough, Ontario during the late 1980s and early 90s. He is known to have committed 18 rapes or attempted rape, and murdered more than three people. In 1988, the police began to realise that there was a serial rapist committing the crimes, so they launched a special task force dedicated to capturing him. In 1990, police gathered DNA evidence from 130 suspects in the case. One of the suspects was Paul Bernardo, who submitted DNA evidence but was released in November of 1990. In 1990, Paul got engaged to a woman named Carla Homoloka. Only a few weeks after their engagement, Paul started to become obsessed with Carla's younger sister, Tammy. Paul convinced Carla to drug her sister and allow him to rape her. The two videotaped the horrific acts they performed on Tammy. During it, Tammy began to choke on her vomit, which led to her death. 
So Carla took the camera and dressed up in Tammy's clothes and pretended to be her and continued with the act. Police looked into Tammy's death but ruled it out as an accident. On June 15th, 1991, Paul kidnapped a young girl named Leslie Mahaffey and he brought her back to his home with Carla. They then videotaped them torturing the girl to Bob Marley and David Bowie records. They then murdered the girl. Paul claims Carla killed her by an overdose of sleeping pills, but Carla claims Paul killed her by strangling her to death. In April of 1992, they abducted another girl by the name of Christine French. They filmed themselves torturing her. They also murdered her. Two years after he submitted his DNA, Paul Bernardo was linked to the Scarborough rapist case and arrested. However, they had no evidence other than the DNA to link him to the murders, so they asked Carla to testify against him, and she did. Carla was sentenced to 12 years in prison, and Paul was sentenced to life in prison. The police found several videotapes hidden in the house. The tape showed Carla drugging and sexually assaulting victims without Paul in the room. Canadian authorities said that there was no need to keep the torture tapes, so they were destroyed. There is an interview in which Carla watches the tapes, but the recordings are off limits to the public, are now only accessible to the police. Carla was released from prison in 2005 and lives with her husband and three children and Paul is eligible for parole in 2020. Timothy Treadwell Death Tape Timothy Treadwell was a bear enthusiast, environmentalist and documentary filmmaker. On October 5th, 2003, he and his girlfriend were mauled to death by bears at the Katmai National Park in Alaska. For 13 years, Timothy had visited the park to film the bears in a natural habitat. He had videotaped over 100 hours of the bears at the park. Years before his death, he received a high amount of media attention for his work done at the park. People would criticize him for the lack of safety precautions in the presence of the bears. In October 2003, Timothy and his girlfriend stayed in the park for an extra week as they wanted to capture footage of a bear they hadn't seen yet. On October 5th, 2003, Timothy spoke to a friend in California and said he was having no problem with the bears. The next day, an air pilot who was sent to pick them up found that their camp had been abandoned. He alerted the park rangers. The park rangers found Timothy and his girlfriend Amy dead. They had been mauled and partially eaten by grizzly bears. Just before the mauling happened, either Timothy or his girlfriend had put the video camera on to capture some footage. The lens cap was left on the camera, so only audio was captured, but it is truly horrifying. The audio lasts for six minutes, for most of the time you can hear Timothy screaming. The bear hardly makes any sounds, except for a few growls. You hear Timothy being dragged away from the camp. After Timothy is killed, you can hear a deafening scream from Amy, then the tape stops. Amy was killed shortly after. Filmmaker Werner Herzog made a film called Grizzly Man, which used Timothy's footage of the bears. There is also a part in the film where Werner listens to the audio with headphones on. Although you cannot hear the audio, from his reaction you can tell it was horrifying. The recording has been placed in a bank vault. In 2008, a part of the clip was supposedly leaked onto the internet, but many believe it is fake. The real recording has never been released. Armin MyWest Tapes In 2001, Armin put an advertisement on a website called The Cannibal Cafe. The advertisement said he was looking for a willing victim to be slaughtered and consumed. A man by the name of Bernd Brands responded to the message and agreed to the proposal. He then met Armin on March 9th, 2001 at Armin's house in Germany. Bernd was killed and the entire event was filmed. The film is two hours long and the things that happened in it are very gruesome. At the very start, Armin begins to amputate the penis of Bernd and then they both start to eat it. Armin then slaughtered Bernd and suspended his body on meat hooks and within the course of 10 months he ate 20 kilograms of his flesh. He also ground up his bones and tried to use it as flour. The whole thing was recorded on video. Authorities seized the tape and it remained sealed from the public. Police arrested Armin in 2001 after they received a phone call from a man who had seen another advertisement that Armin had put up. Police discovered that Armin bragged about the crimes in internet chat rooms. On January 30th, 2004, Armin was convicted of manslaughter as it was ruled out that Bernd Brands was a voluntary participant. He was given eight years in prison, but in 2006, the case was revisited and Armin was convicted of murder and was given life in prison. Armin says that he is sorry for the crimes that he had committed and he has become a vegetarian in prison. And he also believes there are more than 800 cannibals living in Germany. Thank you so much for watching. As gruesome as most of these tapes were, which one are you most curious to watch? Let me know in the comments. 
Be sure to subscribe to our channel to stay updated with our latest videos. Goodbye.